Was my dad an astronomer? Another time, okay? When it's the right time. It's never the right time. If I knew where my dad was... I can't, I can't talk. This is a story about what makes us different. And about having the courage to find the place where we belong. from my dad. It's where I found the bookmark. Why did my father have this book? The bookstore, it's gone. No one knows where I am. I'm stepping through the door And I'm floating in the most peculiar way Ground control to major talk Your work is dead There's something wrong Can you hear me in major talk? Can you hear me in major talk? How do you know my name? The Wonder Kid of Wonderstruck. I love this film, man. Congratulations, it's a beautiful film. Um, tell me about the first meeting with Todd. Todd Haynes, a fabulous director. I met him in my second audition for this, and he was just really cool. He's like such a fun guy. Um, and I just, I got to meet him, and we kind of hit it off. And after that, I got the role, and then we did some training for my character. Um, I play a deaf character, or he becomes deaf partway through the movie. So uh, we did some training for that um, at the beginning of this process, and we really bonded over that, and it was really cool. It's amazing. What was the audition like? What was that process like for you? I did uh, a taped audition from my house. Uh, <laughs> And then How'd that said, go? Was that awkward or was uh, that cool? It's, it's always kind of weird. My, my dad has to film it. Um, but then <laughs> my, uh, my tape got accepted and then um, I went in for an audition. Laura Rosenthal, she's so amazing. Um, but then uh, I met Todd in my second audition, my callback. And um, like I said, we just hit it off. What was the scene that you had to do or what were the, the lines that you had to deliver to him? There was two scenes. There was one where I was a, a hearing character, mm. and then there was one where, I'm, where I, I played the deaf character. So there was a, a hearing scene and a deaf scene. So that was definitely weird because I had never done anything like that before. Mm. Um, so I did some small amounts of research before I auditioned for it. But then after meeting Todd, we did some more research after that. And um, I really delved into this character. Yeah, absolutely. And Todd describes that you guys were actually in New York City, right? You guys were filming here. And then you actually, you put on, uh, was it headphones or is it noise yeah, cancellation? Noise no? cancellation headphones. What was that plugs. like, walking around like that? We walked around New York City, um, around our production office. Which is a pretty noisy city. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, and what you really notice is that there's a smell on every square foot in New York City. What you notice about New York City is the smell, he says. Literally everywhere. So that's really funny. Mm -hmm. And um, it was really interesting to yeah. do that because it was so crazy. Yeah. Was it revealing to see what the, you know, obviously it's just a, it's just a fragment of what the person experiences who's yeah. deaf, but what was it like to walk around and not be able to hear anything? Did you find your other senses were a little more adept? Did you put that research into the character? Like I said, um, you really smell things, and you also, you see things. Like, the texture on everything is just so much more amplified, and, like, you see shadows way more 
acutely. Mm. Um, and it's just really cool. And like, like you said, it, it kind of does feel like your senses are heightened, even though they aren't completely. Mm. So how, the range of time, how much were you shooting? Were you doing the scenes that you were hearing and the scenes that you were deaf uh, differently? Or are you doing them one after the other? How'd that work out? We did most of the hearing scenes towards the beginning of the filming process, but then for most of the movie, my character's deaf. So we kind of scattered around scenes all over the place because that's just how it is. And mm. you can't really film a scene in perfect sequence because it just never works that way. Mm. Um, but it is really, really interesting um, to see how like I have to balance being hearing and deaf character is just really, really different. Mm. Absolutely, and you have a friend, Jamie, that you that you meet, on, and you actually have a co-star with uh, Jaden Michael, right? What was it like meeting him and working with him? I met him in my third audition. <laughs> um, we had a chemistry test, is what they call it, and um, it's it's really cool. I got to meet him, and there was a couple other Bens there and a couple other Jamies, um, but uh, I went in and I met with him, and we pretty much just did the scenes and he was really cool. Mm -hmm. He really had a strong understanding of what he wanted to like bring to the character. Mm -hmm. um, and that was very interesting. So um, I we just pretty much hit it off after that. And then we had some dinners and stuff around New York City. What you do in New York City, you have dinners, you know, anyone oh, yeah. that you remember or any, uh, any occasions that you remember? We had like Japanese hibachi, but you do it by yourself, like you do it for yourself. They're like, Wait, you weren't here's the, the, the food, flames. you make it. <laughs> um, so yeah, Typical it's like- in New York, charge you a lot and then make you make the food, yeah. yeah exactly, that's exactly how it is in New York. Um, but then there's another one where we went and got lobster mac and cheese and that was very interesting. Sounds like you played your cards right, man. Mm -hmm. And then you got to work with Julian Moore. She was amazing in the film. I mean, what was it like working with her? She's so incredibly talented and being able to work with someone who has such an understanding of the business is just so amazing because she is just incredible to talk to and she's really nice and everything she does you learn from and like you don't ask her questions you just look and you learn and it's just it's really cool what was it like being on a Todd Haynes site? Obviously, obviously, you've been on like some big sets before, but what was this experience different? This experience was different um, because the crew was different, and every crew you work with is always different than the last. Um, and Todd has a very um, different vision from every other director I've ever worked with. And he's just so incredibly acute. Like, he has that vision mm. of, of what he wants to bring mm to the movie and no one else could have done the movie even remotely the same way um, because he thinks of things that no one would ever think of um, and does shots that you wouldn't do if you hadn't a different director. I mean, now the film's out there, people are seeing it. I mean, do you have a favorite scene that you got to work on? What's your favorite there? There's a scene where there's a taxi that goes under a like cracked open fire hydrant and the taxi sprayed water up when it went under. And I, of course, went through the space where the water was going exactly on. So I got drenched. You got drenched. And we had about three different costumes. And I had to change a couple times. And then after that, they just had to get three blow dryers and, like, <laughs> blow dry my costume um, before we went and, and taped the scene again. Um, but it, yeah, that was definitely my That's the New York favorite. City water park right there. I like oh, yeah. that. <laughs> um, tell me about, you know, filming in the museum. I mean, the Natural History Museum is where you guys, it's, it's set, right? Where you meet Jamie. What was that experience like? We were the longest film to have ever filmed in the Natural History Museum. Take that, um, Ben Stiller, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was just really awesome. Mm. It was a great honor to be able to work there. Mm. And... Just that's like my favorite museum since I was really little. Um, since you were really little. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, like four years old, and it was it was really really special to me when I was that young because it was just something that you could go around and see things that were totally out of this world that you wouldn't see anywhere else than a museum like that. Yeah. Do you have a favorite room in that museum? 
the whale room. The yeah, one the with the massive the whale above you. It's so incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then after the New York premiere, we got to have an after party in the whale room. It was so awesome. <laughs> yeah. One of the perks of the job. Oh, yeah. I love that. You know, what's so incredible about this, about this film is there's the two different timelines. Um, Millicent, did you actually, yeah, exactly. Did you, did you meet her on the set? Were you guys actually working together or getting to hang out? We didn't really get to work together because she's in 1927 and my character's in 1977. So, um, like this here, her section is, is filmed entirely in black and white. Mm. We actually filmed it in black and white negative film. Mm. Um, and then our, my portion of the film is in 1977, so uh, it's in color and shot like a 70s film um, instead of the silent film um, black and white picture that... Uh, the 77 is set in. So it's it's a big contrast, but it kind of flows together really nicely. Um, and there's lots of, like, little intercuts uh, where they cut between scenes, and it's so cool how Todd and his editor did that, and it's just something that I could never do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, you will eventually, man. Come on, you'll get there. Mm, I mean, did I you don't actually, know. Did you get to hang out with Millicent? I mean, she she's she's fantastic in the film as Rose, and then she actually she's actually deaf, right? Did you guys actually get to um, communicate, you know, through an interpreter? Yeah. Well, we did schooling on set together, so because we had to film 1977 and 27 in the same day, um, so we did get to to meet each other and talk to each other. Um, and I learned some sign language to to communicate with her. It was really really fun. Anything you could teach us, or um, I know sign language. <laughs> there we go. That's all you need to know, and nothing else. There you go. Have a round of applause for that. It's it's not too good, but yeah. <laughs> no, you did it. You did it, man. Um, you got to see the film come out. I mean, unfortunately, you got to you you had to miss the the Cannes Film Festival, right? That's mm -hmm. because you were actually working on another big gig. But when you got to see it for the first time, what was that experience like for you? I was in a small private screening, but it was really cool because I didn't get to see most of the 1927 stuff. So um, getting to see that come together was really awesome. But also getting to see my portion and the way that they cut it together and the way it all came together was just really nice. Are you staying in touch with anybody from the set? Are you guys still in touch? Yeah, I mean, we were doing lots of press um, a little bit ago through all of this, so um, I got to see both of them and I got to talk to everyone and it was really nice. And every once in a while I'll email Todd and he'll email me back and we'll just talk. You're just emailing Todd Haynes. That's oh, amazing. Yeah. I love that. Um, now, you, you missed the premiere because you were actually filming a, a movie with Robert De Niro. Now, that's yeah. a pretty incredible reason. Can you talk a little bit about that film? Uh, the War with Grandpa. It was really, Great really title. fun. I love that title. Um, there was lots of cool people in that. Uh, we had Cheech Marin, James Seymour, uh, Robert De Niro, um, Uma Thurman, Rob Riggle, a ton of other people. It was really, really cool. Um, and I know I'm forgetting lots of people probably, but uh, it was really, really amazing to work with those people because they are just hilarious in this comedy. Um, and Cheech Marin was just so funny to work with. There's actually um, a trampoline scene, and I can't say anything about it, but it was really, really fun to shoot with the, old, with the older people. So it was really... It's fun to see them bouncing around on trampolines. Now I can't wait to see it. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. You know, tell me a little about your character. My character in that, um, I am Robert De Niro's grandson, and he moves in after we, I lose my grandmother and his wife. Um, he moves into our house, and he takes my room. It's my That's room. That's the war it begins. And then I have to move up into the attic, um, so that's not very fun. But... I, I got to um, kind of go head to head with Robert De Niro, which was pretty awesome um, and really fun. And he's just such a great guy and really humble, really nice, and just all around amazing. Yeah. Were you familiar with any of his work before you got to work with him? Yeah, he's Robert De Niro. <laughs> I mean, you can see him in like everything. <laughs> yeah, what's your favorite Robert De Niro film other than War with Grandpa? It's a tough question, That's I know. It's really hard. I don't know. 
I don't think I have one. Robert De Niro is just amazing in everything he does. Absolutely. Great answer. Very diplomatic. <laughs> um, what, what's he like to work with? I mean, is, is he offset? Is he the same guy on set? Or what was it like? Yeah, I mean, he really becomes the character. But then offset, he's just really calm. Um, and like I said before, really humble and really nice. Um, and just he really has a vision of exactly what he needs to do. And he's just incredible. Mm. I mean, obviously, you've worked with a lot of great people up until now, but what started you on this path, man, when you want to start acting? I played Tiny Tim when I was five years old, um, and that was my, my first role. Um, and that was just, re that was, since then, I have been having fun ever since in this mm -hmm. business. And it's just been really great um, to go through all of these different projects and work with different crews and, and work with different people. Um, who all bring different things to the process. And that's what is the most important to me in this because meeting people is the most fun thing about everything. Yeah, Absolutely, well said. I mean, Pete's Dragon is another big film that you did. I mean, tell me about getting that role. Um, I did another taped audition from home. Um, Seems and then, like this is working out for you, man. Just keep on doing it from home. Um, and then I got a call back, and I did a screen test with David Lowry, that director, um, who was also really fun and, and really cool to work with. Very funny on set and just really calm and, and really nice. Um, but working on that film... Um, was different for me and really amazing for me because I had never done something at, of that scale. Um, and we did so much green screen on that movie, and I had never worked with green screen before, so that was a little hard for me at, at the beginning, but it was, it was definitely cool to, to work in something that I had never done before and become a character that it was nothing like me and a feral child. I mean, what were you seeing when you're supposed to be acting with a dragon? Uh, I had about like a tennis ball on a stick to look at. <laughs> and that was my eyeline. That's about it. And, you, and, and was, that, was that difficult? I mean, was that fun? How did you learn that process? I mean, my character of Pete in that really just loves to have fun and mm -hmm. um, really has such a wild side to him. And because of that... Uh, working off of a, a, a fake dragon was a little bit easier because I imagined the dragon with that wild side as well because it's a dragon. Mm. Um, <laughs> so I, I just imagined the dragon like kind of like Pete, and that's why Pete became that character mm. because he grew up with a dragon. Mm. <laughs> Did you read the books? Did you all do all the research for that film? Um, yeah, I mean, the first movie... Uh, it was definitely very different, um, and just uh, obviously this one isn't a musical, but um, the other one was different, so I couldn't really find any research out of that, but uh, I, I did really just research into um, like how that was and, and how um, the time period which it's set, it isn't a spoken timeline, like it, it never is, is said, but... Um, it's kind of set in like the 80s and 70s, so it, it's it's definitely something I researched for that, but um, not as intensely as researching the 70s for this one. Mm, absolutely. I mean, let's talk a little bit about that. I mean, did you watch documentaries? I mean, how did you get uh, know that era? Obviously, you weren't around during that era, so uh, how did you do that research? Yeah, I was 20 years old in 1977. <laughs> no. Um, Todd Haynes, the director, sent uh, all of the cast and some of the crew, um, a Dropbox of old movies and some silent films for Millie and some films from around the 70s. Um, I watched The French Connection, uh, and that was like a movie that I really got to see, the griminess of, of New York in 1977. <laughs> it was really not a safe place at all. Um, definitely very different from now. <laughs> Absolutely. Do you have any other favorites in that selection? I mean, getting a Dropbox from Todd Haynes is something a lot of people would kill for. <laughs> he also sent some songs, um, but something favorite. Again, a really hard question. Um, probably the French Connection. Mm. That was really something that I had a lot of fun watching. Mm. Um, just all the action in that film was really, really great. Yeah. And actually, the director of photography from Wonderstruck 
called up the director of photography from the French Connection and asked him what lenses he used for certain shots and stuff like that. And so some of the shots we have in this are all because of our French Connection connection. <laughs> I like that. So, Great wordplay there, yeah. man. That's amazing. I love that. I mean, tell me a little bit about the sort of characters that you want to continue to doing. Obviously, you, you have some great reference points to old films. Are there any actors that you look up to that you'd love to have a career like? I always love, like I said before, working with new people. And um, so I really would love to work with any new actors. Um, and I look to, up to anybody who really has gone through this business and, and done their process and and done their research and really put their best into it. Um, and so that's very um, special to me. So that was definitely what I thought about for that. And you've had a lot of cool little fun roles where you get to play the younger people. You know, you get to play the young um, Boardwalk Empire, right, Elias? Mm -hmm. And then uh, you got to play a young uh, Jason Bateman in a film. You know, yeah. what, what are those This is where I leave you. Yeah, this is where I leave you, exactly. What was that like? And did you get to actually meet Jason? No, I didn't. Um, I wish. Come on, Jason. Give a dude a call. He played the young you. Yeah, I was um, filming that uh, on, it, actually, I think it was in New York, and we were in a parking lot, and I crashed my bike, and um, it was really cool, um, but no, I didn't get to meet Jason. Yeah, and what was Boardwalk Empire? And you've been on a couple of TV shows, too. Do you like that experience different? Uh, I mean, how do you like that experience versus the film world? Boardwalk Empire really helped me with almost like this, because... Um, it's also set in a, a long ago time period, so because of that, uh, well, but even my section was even farther back from mm -hmm. normal Boardwalk Empire, so um, I watched a couple episodes of Boardwalk Empire, um, but... It's a safe space, you don't yeah, have to worry exactly. about it. Um, but then I uh, just kind of became that character in that time period, and that was really fun, mm -hmm. and like I said, that helped me kind of do some, another kind of period piece um, for this. Yeah. Now you've done a beautiful drama like this. You've done a comedy with Robert De Niro. I mean, what, what, what else do you want to do? Do you want to do like a superhero film? What else do you want to do? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I Who do would you want to be? Film. Green Lantern. I love oh, Green that's Lantern. That's a great, yeah, let's get the Green Lantern back. I like that idea. Oh, yeah. Okay, I love it, man. Okay, audience, quick Q&A. Let's go there. Hi, I have a hard question for you. So you're going to be 13, so you're going to be a mm -hmm. teenager, so happy birthday. Um, Thank you. Where do you see yourself in 10 years, and what would you like to tell yourself <laughs> for to your future self, if you can you know, fathom that right now? It's like a little digital time capsule. I like this concept. Just, like, to have fun, because a lot of adults in their lives, they lose that fun that they have from their childhood, and everybody keeps saying that, um, but I think that's something that's important, like, you should be having fun no matter what you're doing and how old you are, um, and so that's what I would want to say to myself, uh, but where I see myself in 10 years, I'd really love to, to direct, um, I, I, I've worked with a couple directors and just I am always asking about what lenses we're using and um, what's the lighting like and everything like that. So um, I definitely like to direct, um, but then acting as well. I'd, I'd love to become a successful actor. I think you're already on your way, man. Okay, next question. Hi. Hi. Um, I was wondering what some of your favorite TV shows and movies when you were even younger uh, that inspired you to start acting. When I was even younger, I watched the Teletubbies um, and Super Y. Um, I didn't watch too much TV when I was really little. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what inspired me to become an actor was really my sister. Um, my sister did some stuff when I was even younger before I was um, doing that uh, as Tiny Tim. And then I play Tiny Tim because she was also in the show. So I, I, I wanted to try it out because she said it was really fun. And I'm really only here because of that. It's a family effort. I love it. Okay, one <laughs> last question. Hi there. Hi. Hi. So you got to film at the Queen's Panorama Museum as well with Julianne. What was that like? Like I said before, Julianne is awesome. <laughs> um, and I think <sighs> that's hard. Um, my favorite part about that was really just 
the way that we shot that, and we actually used drones for some of those shots of the panorama. Um, and like I said before, with the other museum, it's a great honor to be filming in, in a museum. Uh, and it was just incredible to be on that panorama where nobody's really allowed to go. That was really fun because nobody else is allowed to go. So, yeah. That's amazing. Well, there's some great scenes in the film. Wonderstruck is the movie. It's out in theaters right now. Guys, check it out. In War with Grandpa, you'll look out for that when that comes out. Yeah. Oaks, thanks so much for being here, man. Give him a round you. of applause.